This video is uh, not really a review so much as an answer to a question that a friend asked me. They were curious as to whether an image stabilised lens would have an effect when you're shooting video on the uh, Canon, I think they were shooting on a 550D. So I thought I'd do a little test to show them and to show you what, uh, what difference image stabilisation will actually make to your final video. Now this is the Tamron 18-270. It obviously has a huge zoom range but the downside of that is that at the 270 end you have an aperture of 6.3 which is really pretty small and means that if you're shooting indoors or in low light you're going to have to bump up the ISO if you're shooting video to compensate for that. At the wide end it's a 3.5 which still isn't fantastic when you look at um, some of the prime lenses, uh, some of the prime lenses that I generally use which are like 1.4, 1.8, 2.8 uh, but that's what you, uh, that's what you have to compromise on when you're shooting with a lens that long and not wanting to pay too much and also getting it in a very compact package. Now what this lens does do, and primarily obviously it's for stills, is have uh, image stabilization built in which means that you can shoot with a slower shutter speed when you're shooting stills which kind of compensates for the, um, the loss of light due to the aperture but when you're shooting video it doesn't really compensate for the loss of light at all because you're probably going for a 150th of a second shutter anyway and you're not going to drop down much below that. It makes a massive difference to what the sensor sees with the optical image stabilization built into this, especially when you're at the 270 end, because a tiny movement from your camera from the tip of the lens is going to translate to a really, really dramatic shift in what the what the lens sees because it's it's shooting with such a telephoto 270 is a long, long lens. So I did a couple of tests, uh, all handheld, so just sort of holding the camera, don't have a camera to hand actually, holding the lens like this uh, and the camera like that, trying to keep it as stable as I could. A couple of the tests I rested my elbows on my legs for and that gives you a more stable position to shoot from, but again, you'll see at the 270 end without the image stabilization, it's pretty much unusable. The image is really jittery and shaky and moreover, when you're, when you're shooting at that length of lens on one of these Canon DSLRs, the sensor, because of the susceptibility to rolling shutter and um, the, the jello kind of effect that introduces, it means that even if in post you wanted to uh, remove some of the rolling shutter, which is possible with uh, like iMovie and Final Cut X and any other number of other programs that you've got, um, it it's not quite so effective because you you're trying to fix a problem which is um, very much baked into the image and they do a decent job some of the time but at the extreme end not really so much. If you're at the 18mm end then it'll probably do a lot better uh, because the shake isn't so obvious when you're at, um, at the wider angle end. Having the optical image stabilization on however gives you a much uh, more solid base to work from and in fact it might not even need the additional post-processing. If you are post-processing, um, just to tweak it a bit uh, for the rolling shutter maybe if you're panning around, then it'll, it'll be much, much more effective because you have that clean, um, stable image to work from which maybe just needs a bit of tweaking rather than something which is essentially unusable without uh, the stabilization. Because this does it all in lens, it means that before it even hits the sensor, the image that is getting projected onto the sensor is being stabilized. And that, that's the key here before it gets to the sensor. Once it's on the sensor, you're having to do stuff in post, you know, once the sensor's recorded it. But if you can stabilize it beforehand, that's, um, that's gonna be really, really good. Now, I hate this lens pretty much. Uh, I've used it a little bit for taking photos. It's a little bit lackluster compared to the prime lenses that I use. Um, the Sigma that I'm filming this on is a 1.4 uh, and obviously optically much, much nicer. Um, the Nifty 50 uh, 1.8, uh, I've got a Mare Optic 135mm, which is my longest prime lens, which is a 2.8. And optically, all of those are far superior to this lens. Not uh, least the focusing ring on this is absolutely horrific. It is so plasticky and just slips around, and you have hardly any room for manoeuvre. I mean, it's perhaps a quarter of a turn, if that, which really isn't enough to get uh, fine focus especially if you're doing run and gun stuff. So if you were going for um, an image stabilized lens uh, for your DSLR, I probably wouldn't recommend this for video work. And uh, the Canon, um, what is it, 18 to 55 that uh, is the kit lens, again, has a really, really horrible focusing ring as well, and I probably wouldn't recommend that for, for video work either. The um, 17 to 55 f2.8 
is much, much nicer. Um, again, not, not perfect, but certainly nicer than this, and you've got a constant aperture as well. And the aperture's a big downside on this when you're zooming around. It keeps shifting and jumping, giving you nasty exposure jumps. So I'm going to leave you with these uh, little video clips. I uh, hope that wasn't too long-winded. Uh, you're going to see... And I'll have it up on screen in the corner just saying what, what it is. I'll switch the image stabilization on and then I'll turn it off, uh, do exactly the same thing. I also did a little wobble test where I had it extended to 270 and basically just shook the camera like that with the lens moving about that much. And that, uh, that was really, really telling. I mean, the, the stabilization does a wonderful job there. Hope you enjoy this. Hope it's been informative. And if you've got any questions, drop them below. See, I'm hand holding this. I'm sat down, but my elbows aren't resting on my legs or anything, so it's uh, relatively handheld shot and it's pretty steady. I can just pan around and it's not too shaky. Turn the image stabilization off. And I'm holding it in exactly the same way, but it's incredibly difficult at 270 millimeters to actually retain any kind of steadiness in the shot and you do just get that shake because the lens is extended, the camera's relatively heavy. I'll just try and pan around and you can see the shots jumping all over the place and getting a lot of wobble, a little bit of uh, jelly effect because of the rolling shutter as well probably in there. won't be able to see that really well until I get into the computer. So I'm actually going to jiggle the camera body a little bit. I'm jiggling that quite a lot, and the lens is moving two centimeters, as I say, at the tip, something like that. That's with the image stabilization on, just shaking it a bit. Image stabilization off, and that's just the same. And on.